Today, we got another build ahead of us. We're doing a 10 cob build. We got four Vero 18s, we got two Royal Blues, we got two Reds, and two UVs. The drivers we're using, the HLG 185 is gonna be for the four Veros, the LPC 100 is gonna be for the Blues, the LPC 60 is gonna be for the Reds, and the PC D25 is gonna be for the UVs. All right, there's our layout. We got the Vero, we got the red, we got the UV, we got the blue, and then we got the Vero. The other side exactly opposite so that we have a good spread of everything that's going on. And we have a, oh, hey, what's that? Oh, oh, that looks good. What is that? Can I get a closer look there? Oh, oh, hello, Wood Stout 2.0. Yeah. Moving on, so we got them soldered on, but like an idiot, I thermal pasted them onto a heat sink before I soldered them, so the joints aren't as good as they could have been. I also went with terminal blocks, I thought it'd keep it nice and neat. It does a decent job of organizing it, but it's not as clean looking as I would have hoped. I got my heat sinks off of Heatsink USA, they're the 4.85 inch ones. I like the size, I thought it'd have a nice heat dissipation value. I also like the fact that I could put the wires through the fins and at least make it look somewhat organized and tidy. I do not like the exposed wire here. I will either be encasing it or adding an optical lens for protection because it makes me feel nervous. I also thought it'd be a good idea to put on switches to control the color of light based on what stage of growth the plants are in. So, I'm pretty satisfied about it. It looks pretty good. I will be putting a case and cover for the exposed wire, especially on the back with a terminal block, but that'll be another project for another day. As you can see, I like to drink as well as build. Nothing is more fun. I did end up using Wago clips to connect the DC sides of the drivers to the LEDs in series. I will say Wago clips are amazingly convenient and the ability to change and adapt to what I'm doing just makes them really worth the use. And we're all powered up. We're starting at the low setting on the dims on the Veros. Here's a switch for the blues, then we're going to do switch the reds, and we're going to do the switch for the UVs. Each one's individually controllable. It goes from eight watts to about 341 watts when everything's powered up and all the way to the br top brightness of all the LEDs. So, time for the boring number changes. Essentially what you're watching is the combination of light colors that change the wattage so you see the different ranges. The Veros are always on, but they can be changed from eight watts to 185 watts. And then you could add the blues, add the reds, add the UVs, and add any of those in different combinations, and that's what you're gonna be seeing. So, on to the real reason I brought you here. I wanna discuss light manipulation and light training based on the stages of growth that the plants are going through. It's the reason why I didn't just go with more Vero 18s and screw the LEDs from eBay that were just the colored ones. I really wanted to get those colors in because I find them to be very important in what I'm trying to achieve. For example, if I add red light to the beginning when I first put my clones in, can I get them to stretch up to where that scrog net is? Then take away that red and add a blue light to get really dense internal spacing for a lot of nug potential. And in early flower, keeping that blue light to see if I can't reduce the amount of stretching because I have a height restriction. Then in mid to late flower, adding back that red light and taking away that blue light to see if I can't get really nice dense nugs while the whole time using UV through flower so that I can see if there's an increase in resin production. So those are my goals. That's what I'm looking forward to seeing. That's what I'm looking forward to finding out whether colored light is worth it or it's just hot air. Follow along or don't, I don't mind. I'm gonna be posting this stuff anyway so I have documentation because I tend to forget a lot of the stuff that I find. Until next time, I'll catch you guys later. <laughs> And a week later, because I'm a fickle son of a bitch, I didn't like the way it looked. So I changed it all up. I put a plate on the front to raise up the heat sinks off of it and cover up the wires. And then I decided, hey, why not focus the light into something productive? So I've got lenses off of Amazon. 
threw them on the front, spray painted it, made it look nice, dropped alcohol on it, and rubbed off some pieces, and then now I'm here. I encased the back so that I don't electrocute myself. I gave myself a nice little look to it, so I have a few switches, and well, this is the final product. It's not too bad, but I guess it could have been better. And now, because I had to suffer, so do you. Here is me going back through those wattage and numbers, except this time you can actually see what I'm doing. Enjoy it, because it'll probably happen again. Well, fuck me. I made it a little bigger than I needed to. Uh, it would fit great in a 3x3, three three, but a 2x2, two two, I think it's a little too um, wide. Uh, I had to turn it sideways, and the switches are on the right side, and the outlet's on the left instead of being front and back. But next time, it'll be better, I promise. Catch you then. Later.